All right, sorry about that, guys. I, uh, I typically don't blame my Mac, but I think the Mac is the culprit. So um, thanks for coming to this talk. I'm really excited to be here at Streaming Media West. This is my first Streaming Media conference. So uh, previously, at, I, was, uh, I, was a, I worked at uh, Evernote for like four years building their developer program. And I've been at, uh, for, at Roku for the last, uh, last month and a half or so. My name's Chris Treganos. I run developer community at Roku. And I'm really excited to give this talk today because we're actually going to talk about some uh, new tools and actually a new SDK that we haven't talked about publicly yet. So this is kind of the launch of our new developer tools in terms of building uh, channels on the Roku platform. And so what I want to do for this session is I want to split the talk in half. Um, I'll, I'll leave a lot of room for questions at the end. I want to split this talk in half so we'll basically have uh, a business focus, talk about the actual opportunity of having your content um, or even building applications or games if you want on the Roku platform. And then the second half of this talk, for those with a developer background or those who manage an engineering team, I actually want to talk about uh, samples, actually how you can try to uh, side load and package a, a channel yourself. If you want to follow along for the developer portion in the second half, uh, a couple things that would probably make your uh, testing flow a little easier is, uh, I guess, the prefaces have a Roku device. Probably be good for testing channels. Uh, but also, in the lease, go get a Roku account. So you can go to my.roku.com slash sign up. Uh, register for a Roku account, because then you can enable yourself as a developer in the developer program. You, you enroll in the uh, developer program, and that gives you some extra features in your management dashboard. Kind of unlocks a channel management package. Uh, I'm sorry, a channel package area where you can control everything in terms of side, uh, loading public, private channels, and even setting subscription, advertising, and revenue models like in the dashboard. And then also, I have samples at, it was a long ass URL, so I shortened it. So it's bit.ly slash Roku dev XML. Um, that page has uh, some simple tutorials. I also, for this talk, um, for this talk, I do have a more complex example. If you want to talk to me afterwards, I can send you the zip file. I uh, was unable to get VPN access this morning. So those samples will be great. I also have a, a, a really good uh, sample stream. I have some sample streams, uh, some M38Us, and some stuff that you can actually see how uh, building a channel is on the Roku platform now. So those three steps would be good to, good to do for the second half. All right. So I want to talk about the opportunity of building on the Roku platform um, in terms of how, how, as a channel publisher, content creator, or other platform uh, monetization practices that you can do on our, on our platform, and in addition, how the channel store works, how you can you know, upload what our certification process is like, and kind of a sense of scale for Roku as a company. So at, at, a, at a high level, uh, our goal is to be the operating system for all TVs. We have many streaming players, which people are familiar with. We also power a lot of TVs uh, from top manufacturers. And we'll, we'll go into that into the next slide. Currently, we're selling our Roku devices in uh, the following countries, you know, US, UK, Ireland, Canada, Mexico, France, with, um, with our TV OEM partners and some of our Roku powered partners, which we'll talk about, those are pay TV operators. We're in a lot more countries. Our Roku 4 just rolled out. It is a 4K enabled. It is a 4K capable device, and we, uh, several of our top partners are providing 4K streams for us. I don't have to read off all the slides, but you know we have a lot of channels, and we have a lot of active users. So these are 30-day active users that are streaming content, and monthly, these users are streaming 60 hours a month in content. These are devices people get a lot of, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> sorry, our viewers enjoy a lot of content on the Roku platform. It's a heavily used device uh, in these households. <coughs> so beyond our hardware, uh, people are familiar with the Roku 2, the Roku, it's, you know, it's in most of the major big box stores. Uh, besides the hardware devices, we have two other streams of revenue that are, that are primary focuses for our company. One is Roku TVs. So many TVs, let's say you go to Best Buy, so say like Insig the Sig Insignia brand or LG or Sharp, many of those product lines, if you look at Amazon at the top TVs right now, they're Roku powered TVs. We're actually licensing our operating system to these TV manufacturers. And so we'll work with them. We'll license not only the operating system, but we'll actually help them build uh, their, their circuit boards and their processors to, to make sure that they have a good streaming experience for their users. So when you open up, say, an Insignia TV, 
you're going to see it's going to be branded insignia. But the only difference between a Roku box and the operating system you're using in your flat panel screen is that we also control the Blu-ray player, say, uh, input switches. We have like one extra row where you control the other things beyond the Roku device itself. And then in addition to the TV manufacturers, the OEMs that we work with, we also have a line called Roku Powered Solutions. So this is pay TV operators. Think Sky, Sky News in England. Um, we got Sky Italia. We have other, um, I, don't, I don't have the list off the top of my head, but in Mexico, in different countries, we have pay TV operators that we work with. So they're not only licensing our operating system, but they're licensing, they're actually white labeling Roku devices as a product for their users. So these are pay TV operators that have an entire market in their country. And so they're providing to their users a digital streaming box. What's interesting, the interesting opportunity for pay TV operators is they not only control, they have their own version of the channel store. So we have over 3,000 channels. They're, they're choosing which channels get added to their channel store, the ones that are mostly relevant for their country and for their language. In addition, this box is completely branded for them. So it actually helps us, it helps us grow internationally working with these operators in countries that we're not even currently in as Roku itself. So beyond kind of the three main verticals for us revenue-wise, we have a strong emphasis on the user experience. So if you have, how many people have a Roku at home? Sweet, okay. Uh, so if you, if you ever use a Roku, I think as a, as a user myself, one thing that's dis that distinguishes us is everything we do is for a practical user experience. Um, so we start from the base. So if there's top entertainment, any channel you'd want to have on your device is that Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, uh, Amazon Instant Video, all these channels, you know, we figure out what are the top entertainment. We're going to stream it to you. We're going to have, we're going to have all major channels that you would expect from a streaming player. Search and discovery. So a, a major... Uh, release, a product release we did this summer was the idea of my feed. So a lot of our users don't want to, the whole paradigm of searching by channel and then into their content for some users is very difficult to, to understand. So we launched early, late spring, early summer, the concept of you can search by title of movie, actor, um, episode, epi, uh, any episode. So you can search by the content you want and then we would tell, we tell you through our unified search which of your channels has that content or which of those channels, once they have that content, will actually notify you. So we want to make search easier for the end user and ease of use. There, we have lots of features. Uh, one feature I have grown to get hooked on is uh, in, our, in our remotes, right? So we have a headphone jack and I, it made no sense to me. I start using it. When I'm home, I want to watch shows on my big screen. I don't, also don't want to wake up my kids because Game of Thrones is really loud and scary. There's practical decisions we put in when you're watching TV. We want the people experiencing the TV to have a good experience from it and to, and to enjoy it. So experience, user experience, very important to us. Across the main, the main uh, categories of channels, we're going to have best-in-class partners in each one of those. So whether it's fitness, music, news, we're going to be working with partners uh, on, a, on a partnership level uh, throughout all of those so that our users, if they're expecting a channel, they're going to want it they're going to want to know that it's on the Roku platform. Streaming hours are booming for Roku. So as you can see, since 2010, I mean, last year alone, we streamed about two and a half billion hours of content to our users. This year, that actually 2.5 hours, that's, that's the first half of 2015. Last year, we streamed over three billion hours of content uh, to our users on the Roku platform. And then when you kind of look at the market as a whole, with the exception of obviously the top gaming platforms, Xbox and PlayStation, you know, Roku's leading, uh, leading the market with streaming players. So it's, for us, what's most important, our users are getting value out of it. They are streaming a lot of content. And especially why I'm here is we're looking for more, to add more top channels, more quality channels, uh, great content to the platform to, let our, to help our users get more enjoyment out of our uh, products. So Roku OS 7, so this month it's been slowly rolling out to users. By Thanksgiving, all users worldwide will have Roku OS 7. This is our latest operating system that came pre-built on the Roku 4, but all devices, so all devices, let's say, that have been built in the last five years or so will have, if you don't have it already, it will be, uh, it will be here in the next week or so. So Roku OS 7, uh, it's a new launch for us. I'll kind of talk about some uh, fundamentals of it. 
So containers and codecs, we, we support all commonly used formats. Uh, you know, depending on the provider, depending on, pretending on, uh, depending on the content, which CDNs you're using, we're going to support all major formats that you would expect. And also, uh, the feedback I get from developers, we're directly putting that into our product releases. So as new formats come released, I mean, developer demand is what's driving uh, the adoption for us. And we're looking at uh, what our channels, what our developers, what our partners are asking for, and we're going to support it. Also, Roku billing. So we provide the billing mechanism. So for imagine, imagine entering your credit card info and everything on a D-pad, right? It'd be a very frustrating experience. All Roku users have cards on file, right? So these all, all Roku users have an account, and they all have payment information. So we want that experience of adding new channels. You know, as you cut cable, you do decide what are those channels that I'm gonna, what are those premium channels and those paid channels I'm gonna add to kind of complete my viewing experience. On Roku, all you enter is your, uh, your four-digit PIN, and then you'll be able to instantly share the information with the channel partner, and then they are becoming paid users uh, for, for providers, for, for content providers and publishers. We support lots of different models. So we do have an ad framework, which I'll talk about, and we do support alternative ad servers. Uh, in addition, we have TV on demand, subscription, subscription on demand. And one thing that we get a lot of positive feedback from developers who work with us is we do enable you to do trials. You can say, you know, you can have a user sign up for a one month trial, a one year trial. You can set the term limits. That's all through your, through your uh, developer dashboard. And some, some developers also do in-app purchases. So maybe you have a certain set of content, but for the whole premium content, all of that is provided. We have the whole infrastructure provided for you uh, for billing. So we're the, first, uh, we're the first OTT platform to support Nielsen digital ad ratings. So you know, one thing we hear is you know, we're one platform amongst many that, they're, that you're distributing video content. And we want to make sure we have very accurate analytics so that you're knowing how much people are viewing and that you're able to, uh, there's able to have decent ad inventory and ad spend on these channels. So we've worked a lot with Nielsen. We've rolled it out over the last few months. We've rolled out. Nielsen Dar, Nielsen D-A-R, and everything we do is um, vast, uh, vast compliant in terms of ad server specs. So that's, our, that's the, uh, the operating system. Now we'll talk about the channel store. So the Roku channel store, you can check it out on your, on your computer. It's just channelstore.roku.com. You'll see kind of the main channels. You can search any channel that has, got, that has passed through our certification process will be listed and searchable uh, in our channel store. I'd say the, this is what the channel store online looks like. You could add channels directly from the website. Uh, honestly, though, the primary way our users are adding and learning about new channels is through our channel store on the box. So this is through the ones that we feature. We also have many categories that there's an opportunity to be featured in each one of those categories. And also, uh, search on the Roku device. As your, as your channel passes certification, Let's say you're out, an outdoor channel. You search out, our users search outdoor. They're going to see your channel. They can add your channel directly. So we're trying to make it very straightforward to search for the content, our users to search for the content they're looking for, and be able to directly add it um, and go from there. And uh, as you'd expect for any channel store developers, uh, on the website, you'll have screenshots. You can even upload um, kind of workflows of what the experience is like for a user. On device, you're going to have, you know, you'll be able to see ratings, information about the developer. This is a, a very small description, but you could have a, a more lengthier description so the users can decide if this is a channel they want to add or purchase if it's monetized. So let's say you build a channel. Let's say you already have streaming content. Let's say you already have uh, episodic content or just straight files, uh, straight MP4s or video content. You can build, you can package this as a Roku channel. So long as you uh, go through our certification process, so we're reviewing. This is really the barrier of entry is just to make sure our users aren't downloading your channel and it's breaking or it's not working. So your standard uh, channel certification process you'd expect in any app store is what we're doing. The opportunity there is you know, gr a great content is going to lead to people downloading and trying out, uh, adding your channel to their boxes. From the website, you can share it out and also straight from the device. Uh, quick note, if for the developers and engineers in the room who want to try a sample channel today, you can just publish a, a, a private channel. It's great for developer testing. 
So a developer channel is, uh, you'll have a direct URL, so like my.roku.com, there'll be some, you can have a vanity, a vanity code or just a five digit alphanumeric channel ID. And that's great for if you're testing. Let's say you have different teams all over, and let's say you wanna give someone a preview of what you're working on, you can build a private channel, um, and once you're ready to go public is when you do the certification process uh, to be added to our channel store. And the way you would do that, whether it's private, a public channel or a private channel, you have the dashboard in your Roku account. So again, make sure to create a Roku account. You can see all this for yourself. You'd upload your descriptions. This is all basic, right? Everyone, this is thumbnails, descriptions, uh, tags, et cetera. You would just have full control of that. That would be, um, I should say, developer.roku.com slash apps is, would show you all the channels that you own, including uh, the revenue models that you've chosen for each one as well. All right, so this is the second portion, uh, the second portion of this talk, and this is more developer focused. This is how to build a channel on the Roku platform. I'm definitely gonna give, I'm gonna keep it fairly high level, uh, but for those of you with a more technical background, I think you'll be able to follow along, download the, uh, the sample files, and actually, uh, tonight if you have a Roku close by, you can try it out yourself. So core requirements. You need a Roku player to test, right? So developers are testing any developer, um, any developer that has a Roku device can enable that Roku device in developer mode, and you can simply upload these sample channels and you can try it out for yourself. Also, you're gonna want a user account, which I think a lot of you, sounds like from the raise of, uh, raise of hands, already have them. Obviously, if you're streaming video content, you're gonna need internet access, so that makes sense. And then our developer docs are sdkdocs.roku.com. I put this uh, wide spray of devices on on this slide because I would say any device or Roku TVs that are built in the last five years or so, all of this you'll be able to test. If you have a really old Roku box, uh, some of them, let's say six, seven years ago that were more square, go buy a new Roku and you can try this out, so. So this is a Roku 4, Roku 3, streaming stick, Roku 2. There's also, uh, we have something rolling out for the holidays which is more like a Roku 1, it's very standard composite HDMI device, and then we have uh, Roku TVs. More for on the technical side, make sure you have a text editor or your ID of choice. I personally use Sublime Text. A lot of people use Eclipse with a uh, Roku plugin that you can actually, uh, that will highlight our syntax. You could use Notepad also if you want. Uh, the ability to zip files, preferably zipping files from command line versus I know uh, when I was zipping files using, uh, using my Mac, it was zipping them in a format that wasn't working. So you know, zipping straight from command line would be ideal. Google it if you need to know how. And then also, just command line access. Uh, when you're testing a Roku channel and debugging, why is my stream not working? It's really helpful to have Telnet access, right? So you're actually seeing, you, have a, you can Telnet into your Roku box and see actual error prompts. Uh, uh, you can even do breakpoints to see what's not working in your channel. So. For Telnet access, I would just say uh, terminal, but you can, for Windows, you can do command line, et cetera. And so the core concepts with building a channel, uh, building a Roku channel would be kind of these, I would say these four things uh, are, were very helpful for me to kind of understand how I'd build a channel. One is uh, Roku's bright script. So this is our scripting language. Uh, it's similar to Visual Basic. Uh, you, you, I'll show you the syntax in a minute. It's very straightforward. Um, this is the language in which all Roku channels are built. In addition, we have Roku Scene Graph, which honestly, this is the first talk we're really talking at length about Scene Graph. This is our new XML-based template. This is our new framework for actually laying out the screen exactly how you want it. It's multi-threaded. For those users that are accustomed to laying out the experience how they want it, uh, Roku Scene Graph is going to be pretty useful for you. Also, the concept of side loading. I've kind of alluded to it. We'll go into detail on how to do it, but. You're testing on your local, when you're building a channel, you, you know, my setup is I have my laptop uh, in my living room, my Roku's plugged into my TV in developer mode, and I'm just like uploading, uh, I have a make file, but basically very quickly I'm uploading zip files, I'm uploading the channel, and I'm just testing on my local device. So all your testing is done locally um, through a side-loaded uh, build of your channel. And the last is packaging, when you're ready to when you're ready to upload your channel as a private channel or as a public channel, you, you know, for security, we, we, we ask that you sign your, you sign your, uh, your application. So 
on your Roku device itself, there'll be a little button that says packaging. It says package for the channel store. It asks you to type in your own uh, private key, username and private key. And that way, when you're uploading to our channel store, your, your channel and all your source files are uh, encrypted. OK, so who's familiar with uh, the Konami code or Contra from the 80s? OK. So that's the simplest way for me to explain. You take your Roku, if, if you have the iPhone app remote, that works too. But you basically take your remote control and then you simply go, I actually use emoji in my presentation. I'm, pr I'm pretty proud, right? So we, we go home, 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 up, up, right, left, right, left, right. And what you're gonna see is it's, a, it's one of our secret screens. And it's gonna go into the following prompts. Yeah, I'll let you guys take a photo of my ridiculous slide. Okay. So developer mode. So it'll kind of toggle all around. All of a sudden, the secret screen will come up, which will be developer settings. Uh, quick note, you're not going to brick or break your Roku device. This is just allowing you to upload your own channels to your box. And so a couple things to note here. Your device, uh, your Roku device, has its own IP in your local network. So we're going to tell you on this screen what that URL is. Uh, save that URL. Um, typically, all Roku boxes, the username is Roku Dev. Um, so you just, in your browser, would go to 10.12.12.13 for myself. Yours would probably be 192.168.1. Et cetera. Save that URL, and then you're going to enable the installer and restart. And so here you're going to have our developer agreement. Um, so everyone's going to fully read through our developer agreement all the way to the bottom, and then click, uh, then click agree and to continue. The lawyers had to make sure I say scroll all the way through the agreement. And then for this, the Roku, the Roku box has a URL in your network. And so let's say you're in a large company, you have a large network. Um, you're going to want to password protect that box, right? So you don't want anyone randomly to access your Roku device. And so you're just going to set whatever password you want for your Roku dev, in, your dev box. And then you're going to reboot. And so that URL I asked you guys to save at the beginning, uh, this one. So you, when you enter that in a browser, you're actually going to code to a website that's actually running on your Roku box. And this is the uh, dev application installer. So here, uh, I mentioned earlier at bit.ly, Roku Dev XML, that we have some sample apps that you can try out yourself. So you would actually simply upload the, the zip of that sample channel. When you click install, a couple of things happen. You're, you're uploading these sample channels via zip into your Roku device. And it's one channel at a time. So essentially, on your home screen of your Roku, the last tile is going to be your developer app, your sample app. It's going to run through the app as long as there's no errors or no issues. It's going to instantly load. So whatever you're, you know, let's say you're on your home screen, it will instantly load up the developer app. You can always go back to your home screen to try out the channel yourself. And it lives in your, your main screen. I should say a quick note here. Um, in the developer environment on, on that website I mentioned for your Roku box, we do have another area called utilities. And that allows you to package your app for publishing to the channel store. Um, a random but useful feature for those that own channels is the ability to screenshot what's ever playing from your Roku at that moment. So obviously, I've been using it a lot for this presentation. But whatever's playing on your Roku, you can actually hit the screenshot button under utilities. Um, and you know, for when you're showing a client or when you're showing a partner what the channel is looking like or something on the Roku's UI. It's going to actually reload, and you'll have the full res uh, image um, of this screenshot. In addition, for those that are doing um, you know, more serious application development and, and trying to debug why my stream's not working, you know, many developers are, you know, have an SSL certificates folder to make sure that the channel has all the authentication it needs to open up a stream from your CDN, our Telnet console. So we have a, a few different ports you essentially telnet into the IP address that I mentioned earlier in the developer settings. And we, I think we have four public ports, 8085 going up to 8089. They all do different things. Um, some of them are to actually a console to test, uh, you know, to print out what variables have. You, one's for more setting breakpoints. Uh, you'll see them all. It's on our developer site. But they're all used for different aspects of, aspects of debugging your channel. 
If you were to take any of those zip files that you uploaded to do a sample channel, you're going to see kind of the following things inside. Quick note here, all that's required to run a channel in Roku is a simple manifest file, which we'll talk about. It just lists out what's in the package. And also one directory called source. And the only actual thing to say do a hello world is a main.brightscript file, which is actually just loading up a, a, sub, a main procedure to run your application. These optional items, which are for those that are laying out UI that are doing more control, uh, one is the components directory. That is, uh, in Roku, the, there's a concept of you're building different scenes, you're building different panel sets. Uh, you're going to have those all laid out in your components directory, which are all XML files. And then also your standard, you'd have a directory for images, you'd have a directory, you can, do, you can upload your own custom fonts, um, fonts, glyphs, et cetera, and then certificates for authentication issues. You, you would all load those in the channel. And so we'll go through each one one by one here. So uh, the manifest file, it is a very basic text file. Um, and it's going to list off like this is the title of app. This is where the channel store is pulling all this information from your application. This is the title of the application. The current version and build numbers, that's really important for our certification process because we run certification off every build that you upload to us. So we keep track of, all right, this is a new build. We're going to have to retest the application. And then in addition to, in your package, you would have all the thumbnails and icons for your channel. So think of uh, when a user is on uh, SD, HD, or FHD, you're going to be uploading exactly what you want that kind of channel thumbnail to look like in the, ch uh, in the home screen. Next up is, uh, is the core file that actually just loads your application. This is typically called, it's, your app's going to look for a file called main.brs. That just means bright script. Uh, a sample, I should not have done dark, dark uh, screenshot, my bad. But essentially, it's a you know, sub-main uh, procedure. All this is doing, this is what, uh, 15 lines of code. This is just saying, load one of the XML scene graphs, and then its job is pretty much done. In the background, if you hit like the home button or the back screen, uh, this, this uh, main procedure will make sure to do the right event, close the app, et cetera. This typically doesn't change. All, most of your work is going to be done in XML when you're actually laying out your, uh, laying out your pages and views and um, panels. So kind of the, the kind of the meat of laying out a channel, controlling what your channel's loading, is going to be in scene graph, which we will talk more in depth about. And so with, with scene graph, you're going to have your directory called components. And these are going to have, I would say, either at least one, but multiple XML files, which are for rendering different pages of your content. Whoa, sorry. And again, I shouldn't have done a black screenshot. I should have done white. But this is a sample of what would be inside scene graph. So let's say you have uh, images, uh, images, text, label, and then they have all different attributes. I'll go more into detail in a following slide of what actually is inside a scene graph file. And so we'll talk real quickly about BrightScript, which is, which is our language that's doing the more heavy lifting uh, below scene graph, right? So scene graph is for your view templates, for your presentation layer. Uh, BrightScript is our interpreted language. We've built it directly for our hardware. So there is no, there is no like Java runtime. There is nothing added. We, when you're building a Roku channel, uh, we are optimizing our hardware and our OS to make your channel for the streaming experience and the navigation experience to be fast and seamless. BrightScript has all your basic things you could expect in a programming language and all the loops and everything you'd need for loading content quickly and streaming it uh, to our users. You have, your basic, uh, you have your basic types of loops. Again, this is the screenshot of that main routine. You have a standard while. You know, if you look at any of the syntax, it's pretty basic. Most of your stuff will be done with SceneCraft, but with BrightScript, you can directly load content, render it, and, and stream it to a user based on their actions. Uh, we also have a, it's called the external control protocol. Uh, inputs from your remote control are accessible to the developer. Uh, so anything that's being done on this, including the, uh, some of our devices have like AB buttons, you, you can control all of those things. In addition to, certain developers are building iPhone apps and Android apps for a second screen experience. 
So BrightScript is where you're doing some more of your uh, controller and processing activities. Roku Scene Graph, uh, for those that are kind of uh, laying out the, the UI and experience for the users, will be, you'll spend most of your time with this. This is, uh, we rolled this out a, a few months ago, and this is definitely what we'll be continually to show more examples of as it highlights a lot of the things new in our uh, operating system and our devices. So it's our XML-based framework, and this is how you build apps on Roku. Um, all your screens, everything viewable to the user is rendered with XML markup with your standard XML tree inheritance and control and attributes for every block level element, which I'll talk to the next slide. We've built a lot, we've done a lot of pre-built components that you'd expect, keyboards, things that would be a total pain in the ass for you to build every time. We do have key core components that you can control, manipulate, modify. Um, you can make the experience of all of those in the style and uh, design of your channel, but we do have the functionality, that base layer built for you. Um, we do support with uh, Roku Scene Graph, we have uh, pretty good multi-resolution support, so you can check, uh, what's useful to developers is checking, hey, not only which device, which Roku device you're on, but does this TV have uh, HDMI? Does this TV have HDCP supported um, privacy uh, protection? So you can do checks based on the capabilities of the TV that's displaying, then you can, you can have fallbacks or control that experience to the end user. Things that I think a lot of our users, a lot of our developers will be taking advantage of are custom fonts, um, inherit, you know, doing inheritance in terms of panels, layouts, and also animations. Any, any object, any block level element you're building in Scene Graph, uh, you can control where and how it's displayed on the screen. So I've kind of, kind of touched, uh, I've kind of surfaced around Scene Graph. The easiest way to think of Roku Scene Graph is that there's four visible nodes. So those that are familiar with you know, HTML, XHTML, or HTML5, uh, you have the concept of there's kind of four building blocks in which they all have attributes, they all can be manipulated, and they all have different sources. So one is rectangles. These are elements that can have attributes such as color, size, position on the screen. Think, uh, think shapes, think backgrounds of buttons, think um, colors behind panels, it's those type of things. These are rectangles. Think. Um, when video streaming, you might want to have a lower third, uh, and you might want that to be semi-opaque with your logo on it. Those, that would be a combination of rectangles and also labels, right? So labels is just text. You, we, have, uh, we have base fonts in, in Roku. You can upload any of your custom fonts uh, for your own branding to your channel. And so think, right, a combination of a label with a rectangle, you could have uh, the dialog boxes and presentation that feels like your, your, um, your product. In addition is, this is pretty straightforward, uh, images. So images can be any size, any shape, positioned on screen, and in addition, video. Um, so all of these things, when you put them together, that's how you're drawing your screen, right? So you might say, okay, in my app, I'm gonna have a side panel, I'm gonna have text descriptions that's pulling from my, uh, my CDN's uh, content, content library, and then pulling the meta descriptions for each video, right? So you're gonna lay out, you're, you're gonna work with your designer to lay out how you want that channel to be, or you can use some of the templates we have. And then you have uh, in-screen video players, full-screen video players, anything you'd expect from a channel, uh, a well-built channel. And you can have multiple of these block-level elements on the screen at the same time. So practically, right, so if you combine things such as background shapes with images, um, different layouts, different, uh, different things, you're gonna have, I'm gonna go, kinda go through some samples we have as base layers for you. So we're gonna have a lot of pre-built components to save some time for you. So you know, we do have concepts of an overhang that you would control the logo, the background color, the image, the shape. We have panel sets, label lists. Uh, tangibly, very commonly used things, say dialog boxes. You know, click OK to upgrade to this, subscript, this pro subscription. Uh, this is like dark gray, it looks horrible in this bright room, but the color, the shape, the background image, all of this is editable. It's just we've built the, uh, the underlaying um, a functionality for you that you can invoke very simply new dialog box and then you can control the look and feel of all this. So you get dialog boxes, uh, pin keypads, in-app keyboards, and then a lot of things, a lot of things that, you know, a lot of our developers want to have 
multi-panel, right? So category, subcategory, episodic content, or main feature like big banner on their home screen, digging straight into, into content. Those are just different scenes that you would have in XML that you'd be able to reference each other. And um, as we're gonna keep uh, releasing new templates, but uh, I wanna talk about uh, some stuff that's actually live right now. So uh, Channel Spotlight, we just, uh, one of our first Roku Scene Graph apps to launch was uh, 500 Pixels, if you're familiar with it. It's a uh, photography website where you can showcase your work. They've done a great job. So with 500 Pixels, you can actually go to the Channel Store and, and check it out yourself. You can see, uh, if, if you're using a browser, you can actually see their description. But they've really thought about how they have kind of the main categories. And then you know, each one of these subcategories has a whole community around it. So um, this is gonna allow you to have kind of full screens, uh, full, full uh, TV uh, screen savers and kind of the subcategories of content you'd love. So they obviously have a, they're just pulling from their existing feeds saying packaging the channel is easy when you already have great content. And so uh, depending on which uh, sub navigation they're going through, there's gonna be different layouts, right? Like you can control uh, where your navigation is gonna be. This would be an example of, you know, you're pulling information and then whether it's the XF data on the image or if you're pulling from a data feed, you're looking at how many likes, how, you know, think of any content you have that you have associated metadata and you wanna lay it out in a category view. And then your typical, uh, it's not exciting, but you know, all, just many menu lists so you can control the UI as you want. And this is an example of a dialog box. They chose to keep it gray like we have, but you know, with dialog boxes in terms of prompting your users to take some action, uh, you can fully control the options and everything you have there. So I'd encourage you to check out 500 Pixels. You're gonna see a lot more channels uh, within the few weeks rolling out. And um, my team will be doing a lot on our developer blog, which is blog.roku.com slash developer. We're gonna be releasing a lot of walkthroughs uh, in the next few months, um, in addition to what's already on the documentation site. All right, so kind of wrapping up here uh, to, let's just say channels uh, using Roku Scene Graph that we've just released, like learning more about Roku Scene Graph, we're very excited to see what gets built. You can dig more into our developer docs, which is sdkdocs.roku.com. And then specifically under there, there's, um, there's a little area called Scene Graph XML Tutorials. The, the quick link would just be bit.ly slash Roku Dev XML and all the five uh, sample apps are, are there that you could actually test yourself. And so kind of wrapping up here, I'd encourage you to check out our developer guide. Uh, we also have kind of the, the, the publisher and packaging guide for uploading your channel. So actually, let's say you create a private channel and you share it with some people or you submit it for review. Um, test the workflow of actually building out a channel yourself. I know from my, my background, I, I would wanna try a sample channel, get a feel for how it's working, and then um, uh, upload a layout and go from there. And then, um, my team runs Roku Dev. Feel free to feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, we have pretty active uh, forums that our our engineering and firmware team answers. And yeah, thanks for thanks for building on the platform. That's my Twitter handle. And uh, thanks so much for coming to the talk. I, I really appreciate it. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, we definitely have geo information for, and you know, we have certain channels that are a lot, you know, that contractually have told us they can only be viewable in these stores. Um, and also the users uh, all have geo information, so they're not gonna see content in their channel store that's not allowed. So there's definitely a robust uh, geo information for you. You know, the Canada, I, I can't misspeak. I have to give you an answer like tonight. I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Uh, yes, uh, you then. On device 
I believe you can fetch information from a cookie if you can store it on a Roku. I do not know. Uh, not at the current moment, but I can definitely give you an answer by tonight. Okay, yeah, thanks, man. Yep. You can automate. I know a lot of developers will build their own um, command shell. You can, from Telnet, you can actually, you could automate a process for yourself. A lot of the developer performance do have examples of uh, ways people have automated. I, I know for myself, um, you can programmatically, from a bash script, uh, control um, and test to make sure that you're getting okay responses, you're getting feeds and everything. So it probably depends on, depends on the workflow you need, but yes, you can definitely uh, have an automation workflow. Yeah, so analytics, um, you have some basic stats on the dashboard, and then a lot of developers are building, um, and then you have do have a log of all the information. A lot of developers will kind of um, build information off logs. In terms of analytics, you can connect any, any major analytics um, app, you can connect it into your channel. I know obviously if you're doing any advertising, it's a requirement to have decent analytics built right in. So yeah, all of that would be on the doc site, but yes, you could do that. We are working super hard to get that review process uh, shorter. I would say currently we're at around a three week review process right now. Um, and we're gonna obviously wanna, you know, it, it's a tricky balance, right? We do have certain partners and developers that are like, if you have a launch coming up, or let's say you have the Super Bowl coming up, like, let's talk now, because as the holidays come and Black Friday comes and everything, we're just going to want to make sure we have ample time to test. Um, kind of sucks for both of us if the channel breaks. Um, so yeah, just give us time. Okay. Okay, so November 20th is the deadline for holiday uploads and review process, yeah. I see. So your the question is uh, for the recording. The question is, can I limit the bandwidth that Roku's taking um, so that uh, it's not killing every other internet? So I can't decide if you would do that act at the Roku device level or above. Uh, for example, when I'm testing out a channel, let's say I have a, um, an M3 uh, U8 playlist. Uh, you know, the, my video stream is going to check how much bandwidth is available on your current connection, and then it's going to downplay the quality of the video based on what your internet can handle. But at the network layer, I don't, I don't believe my Roku is, I'm going to be telling my Roku what the, like, Roku's just going to test how much bandwidth it has. I think you'd almost have to do that at your network or router level. Yeah. I mean, I want that video to look really good quality, so I mean. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that I, I think you would have to, you would have to limit, you would have to throttle your Roku's 
the uh, internet throughput that your Roku's IP is getting. I think you'd have to do it before it gets to the Roku. Because the Roku is, the Roku's never going to want to uh, take less bandwidth than it can. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've seen it. we've seen a lot of developers that are building channels now. Uh, with SceneGraph, they've been doing kind of navigation over full screen video. Um, so the most common things I've been seeing is like uh, developers that have kind of been you know incorporating. Uh, let's say you have the feed and you do like a, a rectangle with animation. I've seen a lot of like sliding shelves. I've seen like panels come over, but the panels transparent and you just see the controls. So uh, I've definitely, I mean, scene graph rolled out, I'd say, two months ago. So, but already a, a couple of the, I work a lot with the uh, development shops that are building channels for um, providers at all different uh, sizes and levels. Um, that would definitely be possible. You would basically have, you would tell the video to run full screen. You'd say where this display is. And then if it's, uh, let's say, you want to have a kind of social area, you'd have your social icons with the text um, tied to some action on your remote. So Sky has their own channel. Like so in Sky Italy or Sky Germany, they have their own channel. They're choosing which apps. Typically they're just saying which apps they don't want in the channel store. But if you're if you're using a Sky box, they certainly will choose. So we do know of certain channels, uh, developers that are reaching out directly to Sky and saying, hey, we think we have some great content for your channel. I mean, that is a small portion. I mean, most people, if you're already in the Roku channel store, it's highly rated. A lot of the white label Roku powered solutions, they're going to have your channel. Um, all right, guys, uh, we're out of time. Thanks so much for coming, and enjoy your streaming media west. Thanks.